Good morning from Epcot. We are here this morning to show you how to make the most of your festival day using Disney Genie Plus. We're running a little bit late, so let's get to it. Hi ho everybody, this is Rob with Ear Scouts and we are here at the Epcot Food and Wine Festival to show you how you can maximize using Disney Genie Plus when you're here for a festival day. Really this video though is helpful for any time you have any plans that you want to do in the middle of your day. So maybe you want to go back to your hotel and take a nap or maybe you want to have a pool day in the afternoon or head to Typhoon Lagoon. Whatever it is you might want to do in the middle of your Epcot day, this is going to be the strategy you'll use to get everything you need to get done with Disney Genie Plus in the morning and in the late afternoon, early evening. We started our day though just like we would any other Epcot day. We got that Guardians of the Galaxy boarding group first thing this morning. It's gonna call us probably any minute now. And we also went ahead and grabbed our very first lightning lane of the day. For us this morning, we chose Test Track, but really you could pick either Test Track, Remy, or Frozen. Any one of those that would work. We're gonna talk about that a little bit more in this video, but we're just gonna get one of those big rides done first thing in the morning. That is the key to starting this strategy. But from then on, it's gonna be a lot different than we normally do. Normally, we would be focused on all three of those rides and trying to get those done, but today we're gonna to use a different technique that you might have heard of called stacking. We're gonna use stacking so that we have more to do later in the day, but we're gonna get a ton of stuff done this morning, so let's get going. Future Rob here, future Rob coming in from the future. As you can see, the light has changed. I look sweaty and gross. That's because I am filming this in the future. So I have some really important information to share and I wanted to put it at the top of this video. So I'm kind of cutting this in. Number one, I just learned one of the coolest things I did not know about Disney Genie Plus. You're gonna see that later in this video. So stick around for that. Number two, there is an important thing I forgot to mention at the top of this video when I originally filmed my intro. And that is this. This morning, when I went in to book my very first lightning lane, I did not see what I normally see. Normally, I tell you, pick a few rides so that you can sort of see the return times that you get right there at 7 a.m. And then just grab the best return time you can get. And that's a good way to start your day. No more is that the strategy because Disney has made a change. From 7 a.m. until 7.30 a.m., Disney is no longer going to show you the return time you get until you tap in. Now, why are they doing this? Because they have gotten tons of complaints from people. First thing in the morning, there are so many people trying to grab those lightning lanes. You know, I've showed you in this video, if you don't tap in super fast, you get a much later return time. So I guess Disney was tired of hearing the complaints. So what did they do? They hid the return time. So does this change our strategy? Yes, a thousand percent. Yes, this changes our strategy. You should not pick more than one ride to go for first thing in the morning. You should also immediately tap in as quickly as you can and take what you have gotten. Do not back up. If you back up and try to go back in, you are not going to get a better time. You are almost certainly going to get a worse time. So first thing in the morning, pick just one ride when you edit those selections right at 7 a.m. as quickly as you can tap in. Just take what you can get because it's probably not going to get any better than that. Well, that's all I got. So we're going to send you guys back to the past, to the original intro that I filmed this morning, and I will see y'all in the future. If you watched our video comparing classic Epcot treats with the festival items that are on offer here, you might have learned you don't necessarily want to skip out entirely on the delicious year-round food that's here at Epcot. There is some delicious food to be had here, and breakfast is actually a great time to experience some of it. This is because you can't get a festival breakfast, so I recommend you choose your first lightning lane of the day based on what you want for breakfast. If you're feeling like doing Les Al, a delicious French pastry, which is one of my all-time favorites here in Epcot, you should maybe consider starting your day over in France with Remy. But another one of my classic Epcot favorites is the school bread that you get over in Norway. It is delicious. It has a little bit of like an Earl Grey tea flavor. It's like a filled donut with some coconut and custard. If you're gonna try that, definitely wanna start your day with Frozen. 
We, however, decided to start our day with Test Track because I wanted to have an easygoing beginning of the day. I didn't want to rush back into World Showcase and come back here to the front of the park, which is where we're going to focus on our early attractions. I just kind of wanted an easy peasy breakfast. You've really got two options at the front of the park. Option one is you could do Connections Cafe, which is Epcot for Starbucks. It's just a Starbucks. I don't necessarily recommend getting Starbucks when you're at Disney World because you can get Starbucks like anywhere. You get Starbucks at Target for crying out loud. So why get Starbucks when you're at Disney? What I recommend doing instead is trying Joffrey's. Joffrey's is a Florida-based coffee company. It is kind of the exclusive coffee of Walt Disney World. You'll find it in all the resorts and all the parks. I really love it. They also happen to have really delicious donuts. Now, if you find the cronut, they make a cronut. It's like a square donut that's like a deep fried croissant with glaze. Holy cow, that thing is so freaking good. We've already been called for Guardians of the Galaxy, so I don't want to waste any more time here. I want to get going on our first ride, so let's get to it. talk for a minute about Drax. Drax is definitely the star of the show at Guardians of the Galaxy. He is so funny. Quick time check. It is a little after nine o'clock. If you can hear that massive rumble in the background, it can mean only one thing. We are off to test track. <laughs> Not to brag or anything, but I'm pretty sure I just designed the ugliest truck in the history of Test Track. Let's see how it does. Well, it is 9.35 and we have already finished two of the biggest rides in this park. I'm feeling pretty good about this start to our festival day. So now that test track is done, we have completed phase one of our perfect festival day using Genie Plus, and that is getting two of our big rides out of the way. Keep in mind, you might not be able to do two because it really depends on when your guardian's return time is when you're going to get that one knocked out. But phase one is getting one of our big rides that are on Genie Plus knocked out. And if you can, get Guardians knocked out as well. Now we're entering into phase two. If you've seen our other videos, you know that phase two would normally be continuing to grab those really big lightning lanes, the ones that are hard to grab later in the day. In this park, that would be Remy's Ratatouille Adventure and that would be Frozen. But we're not gonna do that today. We're gonna play things a little differently. We're gonna burn through all these rides that are up here in the front of the park that you can book very, very easily. These rides that are up here at the front, we're talking rides like Mission Space, Spaceship Earth, The Seas with Nemo and Friends, all of these rides that are up here at the front tend to be very easy to book with lightning lanes. You can usually get them almost immediately. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to start with Mission Space. Side suggestion on Mission Space, you should try if you can to time this ride to be as far away from eating as possible because it does sometimes upset your stomach. So we're a little ways away from breakfast now and we're a little ways away from lunch. So this is the perfect time to go do Mission Space. So every ride at Disney World has something that cast members refer to as the tower. 
basically that is an area where a cast member is going to keep an eye on everything that's going on on the ride throughout the whole ride to make sure everyone's being safe. What's cool about Mission Space is you actually see the tower as you're walking in. You'll see this sort of area that looks kind of like ground control for a space launch and you'll see there are actually people in there looking at the screens. They are doing actual work. They are watching your space launch as you're riding the ride and making sure everything is going safely. was an amazing mission this space. I gotta tell you, when you do this ride and really any of these kind of simulator rides, you get out of it what you put into it. And I was there with this family. The dad was the pilot. He was taking everything very seriously. They were all just kind of in character and really just living the moment. And it was so much fun. The kids had a blast in there. It really felt like we were on an actual mission to Mars. And that's the way to do it. That is the way to do it. That family was so much fun. With these rides, what you get out of it is what you put into it. So give it your all and you are gonna have so much fun in there. And now it's off to our next ride. I think we're gonna go from Mission Space to Spaceship Earth. Well, we had just finished thanking the Phoenicians for the alphabet. Thank you, Phoenicians. And now we have booked our next lightning lane for the seas with Nemo and friends. We booked it at 1049 for 1050. Like I said, these ones up here in the front of the park, you can usually get them for like right that minute. So that's what we did. We're gonna head over there and then we are gonna burn through all these rides up here at the front of the park in record time. And we'll be done in time for lunch at the festival. Let's go do it. It is 12.30 on the dot and we have finished every single ride here at the front of the park. All we have left are the three rides that are back in World Showcase. That's Remy, Frozen, and Grand Fiesta Tour. Now, you can't actually get a Genie Plus Lightning Lane for Grand Fiesta Tour, so for that one, I would recommend you just ride that when you get to the Mexico Pavilion. The line is not usually too terribly long for that one anyway. What we're gonna do right now is we are gonna sit down here in the air conditioning and we are gonna book our next lightning lane. But now we're not gonna try to get one for right this moment. We're gonna use a process called stacking. So what stacking means is you're going to try to get lightning lanes for later in the day. For us, I think the ideal time will be any time after four would be good. And then we're gonna let the two hour rule pass. 
and then you would book another lightning lane for later in the day. The idea is you want to stack up rides so that when you're ready to start riding again, you have a stack of rides that you can go do one after another. Now, what's difficult about doing that here in Epcot, you have the same problem over in Animal Kingdom. There are not a lot of rides that are easy to stack. I'm sure you've noticed as we've gone through this video, almost every single ride we've booked, we've gotten a return time that was basically right at the time that we booked it. That means you can't really effectively stack those rides because the only way to book a return time is to take the next available. You can't schedule one into the future. So all these rides that we got so easily, they're not really stackable. The three rides that are stackable in this park are Test Track, Remy, and Frozen. I didn't want to have to do all three of those later in the day because if you've watched our other videos, you know those key rides in each park become a lot harder to book as the day goes on. That's why I don't typically recommend this strategy, but we're going to kind of split the difference today. We got one of them early, but we're going to count on our ability to play those genie slots and get those last two stacking them for later in the day. Fingers crossed that we can grab them. I have a feeling that already they're gonna be showing as no longer available, but you and I both know with enough spinning, you can pretty much land any ride in the park. Let's give it a shot. Well, I was grateful to be here in the air conditioning. I definitely recommend when you're trying to do this step, find a nice quiet place in air conditioning because it might take a little while. We were pretty lucky though. It actually only took us about six minutes to land a return time for Remy. We got it at 5.30, 5.35, somewhere in there, which that's perfect. That's exactly what I was aiming for. It did take us a while though, because initially, just like I feared, it said no longer available for Remy and for Frozen. But I went ahead and I set up my Disney Genie slots. Quick refresher on how you would do that. You would tap on your tip board. You would tap on edit selections. You would select only those rides that you're aiming for. So for us, it was Remy and Frozen. And then you're going to patiently refresh, refresh, i.e. spinning those wheels on the slot machine and hope that you get a return time that matches what you're looking for. So for us, we were really looking for anything after 4, 4.30. That's gonna give us plenty of time to eat all the delicious food at this festival. I set an alarm on my phone to go ahead and remind me to book that last lightning lane in two hours. That one's gonna be for Frozen. After we book that, we are done with Genie Plus in this park. We will have ridden every single ride we could ride with Genie Plus, and we can now just enjoy the festival and fill our bellies with delicious food. Let's go do it.
alarm just went off on my phone, meaning it was time for me to book our next and final lightning lane of the day. I definitely recommend you set an alarm on your phone when you use the two hour rule. So as you know from our other videos, you have to wait two hours after you book a lightning lane before you can book the next one, unless of course you use that lightning lane first. So since we are stacking, we had to wait the two hours, the alarm went off and I sat down and diligently tried to book Frozen, the last lightning lane we have to book today. And I gotta tell you, this is the reason why I don't recommend this strategy as your normal everyday Epcot strategy. Those rides, Remy, Frozen, and Test Track are incredibly hard to book later in the day. And that's what happened here. I spent 15 solid minutes playing those Disney Genie slots. I got nothing for Frozen. Now, does that mean we're not gonna ride Frozen? No. It just means we're gonna go do something else because my rule, and I think you should adopt this rule too, do not spend more than 15 minutes of your precious park time staring at your phone, playing those Disney Genie slots. Take a break, go enjoy something here in the park, and then come back to it. In my experience, I don't know if it's just putting it out into the universe, but when you take a break from the slots, you go and enjoy your day, it actually ends up being not so bad to book it when you come back and sit down to try again. So we're gonna go do Grand Fiesta Tour, we're gonna have a fun time there, and then we're gonna sit down again, we're gonna take a deep breath, and we are gonna get frozen. After we got off of Grand Fiesta Tour, I sat down, I played those genie slots again, and guess what? I still was not able to grab a lightning lane for Frozen, but I noticed something. I noticed that Frozen was showing as being down right now, and I remembered that when I was trying to play for the lightning lane earlier today, Frozen was also showing as down. So I started to think, you know what? This has only ever happened to me once before. There's only been one other time where I tried twice to get a lightning lane and wasn't able to, and it was for Test Track. And Test Track had been down for a long period of time and was currently down when I was playing. Now that other time, Test Track did come back online and very quickly after it came back online, I was able to book a lightning lane. So I started to think, maybe these two things are connected. So I just went and spoke with a cast member and sure enough, I just found some brand new information that I am so excited to share with you. So apparently, and I did not know this before now, apparently Disney intentionally sprinkles in some lightning lanes for rides that have run out of lightning lanes sort of gradually throughout the day because I guess they want people to be able to chance upon those later in the day the way that we teach you how to do in these videos. So I had always thought that the only way that those came available was by someone canceling. Apparently that is not the case. Disney intentionally drops more in there. Now, when a ride goes down for an extended period of time and they don't know when it's gonna come back online, as has happened with Frozen, they turn that off. They don't let any more sprinkle in. And it is possible, the cast member wasn't sure about this part, but it is possible that they also turn off the ability to grab those lightning lanes when people cancel them. So she wasn't sure on that. She's like, eh, maybe, but she definitely thought that what is happening and what we're experiencing is they've turned off the sprinkling in of the lightning lanes throughout the day. So that was some really cool information that I did not know before today. I'm kind of glad this happened. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna go enjoy more of the festival. We're gonna keep an eye on Frozen. And when Frozen reopens, we're gonna play those Disney Genie slots again. We'll see what happens. Stick around and find out. We are over here at Remy because this is actually the very end of our lightning lane window for our Remy reservation. It is actually a little past 625. There is, of course, a grace period. You get that five minute grace period at the beginning of your lightning lane reservation, but you actually get a little bit more than that at the end of your lightning lane. So we're taking advantage of that right now. I found 
Remy ears, which these have been out of stock forever, so I was super excited to find these. Had to make a pit stop and get that. But the important thing to share with you, we still do not have our Frozen Lightning Lane. The ride has not reopened, and I think I can safely say now for sure, when the ride is down for an extended period of time, they are just turning off all the Lightning Lanes because I have been playing off and on, off and on for the whole afternoon, and I have not seen a single time pop up. So I should add that I have been able to book Lightning Lanes before when a ride is down. So I'm not saying that any time a ride goes down, you can't get a Lightning Lane, but I think what happens is when a ride is down for an extended period of time or when I think maybe a ride goes down and they know it's not coming back up for a while, I think that is probably when they institute what we're seeing now. I don't think you should just give up on trying to book a Lightning Lane just because a ride is down at that moment, but if you try for a little while and it seems like it's not working, it's a good chance that maybe they don't know when that ride's coming back up, so they have turned those Lightning Lanes off for the day. Hopefully Frozen is gonna be coming back online by the time we get out of Remy. Let's go take a ride with the rat. We have found a fabulous spot for the fireworks. We're actually in a place that normally is blocked off for like special events. So there's these picnic tables that are right here behind Disney Traders. I definitely recommend if this is not being blocked off for the night for a special event, definitely grab these. These are the best place to watch the fireworks from. Our place that we usually do it from is actually right over there's some tables right near the boat dock where you take the boat that takes you over to Morocco from Canada area that is probably our number one spot normally just because you can't get over here but if you can get here if you can get to these picnic tables this is primo viewing area for the fireworks got some other interesting news to report and that is frozen finally came back online a little after seven o'clock frozen is up and running I spent 15 minutes here playing those Disney genie slots nothing yet I think they maybe haven't turned them back on yet, honestly. They've got so many people backed up from earlier in the day who had lightning lanes that got canceled. I'm gonna keep playing though, off and on through the rest of the night and see if I can grab anything. I don't recommend that you, right now at this point, let's think about this. We have invested probably 45 minutes sitting somewhere refreshing for Frozen. Should you do that on your vacation? No, absolutely not. Do not do that. We're gonna do it though so that you can see what happens. We'll see later on tonight, are we able to get that final lightning lane for Frozen? And either way, we're gonna have a great fireworks show for you at the end of this video. Okay, when I tell you guys that you can always still get a lightning lane, believe it. I didn't even believe it tonight. I thought there is no way we are gonna get this frozen lightning lane. This, this ride has been closed all day long. We've been trying to get it for 45 minutes, at least probably an hour refreshing. We got it. We got a frozen lightning lane return time for 8.30. Oh my gosh. I If you had told me that the sweetest lightning lane of my life was gonna be frozen, I would have told you you were crazy, but this has been an epic quest for this lightning lane and I cannot believe we got it. Let's go ride it. So we have made it over here to Frozen and the lightning lane line, the lightning lane line is halfway to China. If this had been our real Epcot day, like we were only having today to do Epcot, I live here, I can come here anytime I want, but if this was your real day and your only day, you should not play the Disney Genie slots for hours. As soon as that ride came back online, it was only at a 50 minute wait at that point. Jump in that line, just go ahead and do it. Uh, of course, our goal was to see if we could do it, and we did do it, but it's still gonna be about a 15, 20 minute wait. 
I'm happy to wait in it though. Let's go say hey to Anna and Elsa. <laughs> This has definitely been, without a doubt, the most epic of all of the Genie videos we've done so far. Man, that one went down to the wire. We had so much fun making this video. I hope you guys picked up some great tips for your next trip to Disney World. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell. And until next time, don't forget to think happy thoughts, everybody. We'll see you again real soon.